in this video, I'll guide you step by step how to use the OpenAI API with Python and set it up in your local environment. So there's a lot of tutorials on the internet promising to teach you how to use the OpenAI API. But from my personal experience of learning, I found that they usually show you how to start by not showing you how to start. I mean, I don't know how that works. I often found myself being thrown into an already complex structure. And even worse, sometimes I was just presented with a block of code and telling me not to worry about it. And don't worry about how this works. I mean, what do you mean not to worry about it? My stupid little monkey brain just cannot move on from it until I understand what it means. You know those people telling you that they have a secret and when you ask them what's the secret, they just tell you never mind? Yeah, that's what it feels like. Well, you've come to the right place. I'm here to truly break this down for you. So let's get started. All right. First of all, you will need an OpenAI API key. If you don't have one yet, you need to come to their website and sign up for an account. In this case, I'm going to log into my account, choose the API and go to the view API keys. So once we're at this page, we can create a new secret key. I'm going to click on this and name it an AI API demo. Okay, copy this, save it somewhere safe. Remember, you only have one chance to save it. So make sure you save it at a secured place and never show it to others because if it's exposed, people will use your API and that will cost you money. Well, now you might be wondering, why am I showing you my? That's because by the time you see this video, this key will already be revoked. After this step, you do need to set up a credit card in the billing in order to start using the API. So over here, just put in your credit card information. I'm not sure if they still give free credit to new accounts. If they do, that's great. If not, just put up your credit card. The price of your API request will be based on token amounts and the specific model that you're using. You can go to this website to check out the models and the costs that are associated with it. So usually they charge by per thousand tokens. This entire paragraph is 35 tokens. So what are tokens? Tokens can be thought of as pieces of words. You input a prompt that contains some words and these words are then breaking down into tokens for the AI model to process. These tokens are not exactly cut up where the word starts or end. One token is roughly equal to four characters in English. 100 tokens is roughly 75 words. In order to see how many tokens are there in a given request, we can go into the tokenizer tool provided by OpenAI and let's do some tests. For example, for GPT-3 model, let's input how many tokens are in this sentence. As we can see, actually every single word in this sentence are breaking down into one token. Let's try something else. How does this tokenizer work? In this example, we can see that the word tokenizer is actually being broken down into two tokens highlighted by two different colors. It does show that generally simpler words and very common words will usually be counted as one token, but some uncommon or longer complex words will be breaking down into two or three tokens. Okay, once you set up the API key and understand the pricing, the next step will be start to set up our local environment. Okay, here I'm going to assume that you have some very basic knowledge on terminal commands, Python and Git. If not, you can still follow along. Just know that you might need to look up a few things here and there. And trust me, it's totally not hypocritical. To set up our local environment, the first thing I'm going to do is open up my terminal. On Mac, you can just search for a terminal. I'm using an application called iTerm, which is the same thing, but just gives you some customizability. First thing is I will find a location to create a directory for this project. Type in ls just to see what's in here. There is a folder called brutefab. I'm going to use cd into the brutefab folder let's see what's in there and i'm just going to create a new folder inside here just call it open ai api demo so now if i type in ls you can see the folder already exists if i go into this folder so you can press tab and it will automatically complete your command here i'm going to open this directory up with my code editor i use vs code in terminal you can open up the current directory 
in VS Code by just typing in code space and period execute this, we should be able to see VS Code is opening up. I'm going to put it on the right side for you to see. On the left side, I'm going to open up the API reference. The first thing we want to do is install the OpenAI package. To do that, I'm going to open up a terminal inside of my VS Code. You can also do it in your regular terminal, but since there is one inside of VS Code, I'm just going to open one here. Once we have the terminal open, we want to just install this package by copy this command, pip install OpenAI, and paste it in here. I already installed it, so you can see it says requirement already satisfied. But if you haven't already installed it, it will just start to install it. And I'm going to maximize my code screen so you can see better. And the first thing I'm going to do is to create a Python file. I'm going to call it OpenAI API demo.py. Now that we have the OpenAI package installed, we can import it into our file. In order to access the OpenAI API, we need to use the API key we saved earlier. I'm going to define a variable. We can copy the API key in here as a string. We can set the OpenAI.API key equals the API key variable. Okay. Once we have the API key assigned, the first thing we can do with it uh, is to see what are the types of models we have access to. In order to do that, I want to bring your attention to this page, OpenAI documentation. And in the model section, you can come to this page to get an overview of the types of models they have. Keep in mind that as a regular user, we won't get access to every model. And also some of the models are already discontinued. If you want to check it, just come here and take a look. For example, the GPT-4 API, I think not a lot of people have access to it. I signed up for the waitlist a few months ago and I still haven't gotten access to it yet. How do we know what are the models available to us? To do that, we can use this function to list out the models and we can say available models equals because it's plural and we just want to extract the names of the models. So I'm using here a list comprehension. Now we just need to print it out. Oops, I have a typo here. So here I'm saying for each of the model in available models, print the name. Let's run this file and see what it does. I'm going to set Python open by API demo. Keep in mind the first time you use the API, it might take a little bit longer. Okay, it has printed. As we can see, we really do have access to a lot of models. Congratulations, you have now successfully made your first OpenAI API call. And I know you're probably thinking, yeah, but that's boring. Don't worry, the exciting things are coming. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video so far, please do me a favor and hit the like button below. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and share this video with more people. All right, let's go back to the tutorial. All right. So far, we have defined a variable called API key and assigned the OpenAI API key to this variable. But the problem is this is really not a very secured way to do this because let's say you're working with other people or you simply just want to push your code to GitHub. Then if you share it with other people, they will be able to see your API key. So I'm going to show you a way that you can hide this API key. I know there's also other ways to do it, but I'm going to show you one of the ways I learned. We will need a package called .env. We download this package by using pip install python .env. Okay, just wait for this to finish. I already have this installed. The next step is that we're going to import this package and we'll do from .env import load.env. Okay, and we also need another package which is already included in your operating system. It's just called OS. The way it works is that we will create an environment variable and save it in a file called .env. And in order to access it, we need to use the OS to access the environment variable. We use the .env by just call this function in the beginning. And over here on the directories, I'm going to create a file. Just call it .env. So the dot just means it's a hidden file. What we're going to do is in this file, we're going to create a variable name called OpenAI API key. Just paste in the API key we saved. Actually, remember not to have any spaces in between. Here we go. 
and save this file. In this demo file, I'm going to just get rid of these for now and create another variable called API key. And to access our environment variable, we need to use this function os.getInf, type in the name of the variable we want. Let's see how it works. So now if I print out the API key, if I run this file, I should get the same value of the API key we just saved in the .inf file. Okay, here you see, it printed out the API key. So this way, when we share this code, people will not see the API key exposed inside of this file. So now we just need to do OpenAI API key. Okay, that does the same thing as the previous version. One more thing before we finish this step. If you're using GitHub or GitLab to back up your code, when you push this directory to your GitHub, it will also push this file up, which defeats the purpose of us trying to hide it. So we, we're going to find a way to tell Git to ignore this file. When we push the code up, we will skip this .in file and just push the code that we want. To do that, we just need to create a new file here called git ignore. So what this does is that it's just telling Git ignore the files inside here. Over here, we simply just need to say .inf and save this. And this way, when you use Git to push it up, this will not show up in your Git repository. Okay. Remember that this step is not necessarily related to OpenAI API key. I thought about it. This will make the video longer, but I think it's important to show you the best practices related to API keys so you can carry this forward in your development journey. Okay, now that we have the API key correctly set up, we're ready to make requests and chat with the AI model. But which model should we use? Over here on the OpenAI website, they generally recommend that you use either GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 Turbo. Since I don't have access to GPT-4, I'm going to use the gpt 3.5 Turbo and the chat model that is compatible with GPT 3.5 Turbo is called the Chat Completions API. Let's take a closer look at the Chat Completions API. The chat models take a list of messages as input and return a model generated message as output. And inside of this chat completions request, there are different types of inputs. To get an understanding of the types of input, we can go to the full API reference documentation over here. You can see inside of the request body, we can define different types of input. And we don't need to use all of them, especially in the beginning. Just know that the main input is the messages parameter. You can define the type of model and the sampling temperature to illustrate how to use it inside Python. Let's go back to the coding window. We're going to define response is open AI and chat completion create. Okay. The first input we need to define is the model. As we established before, I will be using the GPT 3.5 turbo. Okay. And the second input will be the messages. Inside here will be the conversations we're having with the chatbot. Think of this as the prompt you're inputting. It contains an array of message objects where each object has a role, either a system, user, or assistant. Typically, a conversation is formatted with a system message first, followed by alternating user and assistant messages. So what does that mean? That means we will define the first object and set its role as system, followed by the content for the system. Let's just use the example they gave, which is you are a helpful assistant. I saw some people were saying that it doesn't matter too much, but officially the system message helps set the behavior of the assistant. For example, you can modify the personality or provide specific instructions about how it should behave throughout the conversation. In this case, you are a helpful assistant. I mean, sure, of course, uh, <laughs> I don't think this is going to do too much. Then the messages are followed by alternating user and assistant messages. So imagine the user and assistant are having a conversation and by the end, the user will ask a question. The role now is the user and the content the user says is who on okay and the next the assistant keep in mind you don't necessarily have to have an alternating conversation you can also just ask one question but providing alternating conversations gives the chatbot some context it will usually provide better answers afterwards and the content i'm going to copy the example here then the next one will be user again and the content is where was it played okay once we finish this, we can just print out the response and save this. I'm going to just run this file and let's see what does it do. Okay, now we can see we get a response 
and it says the 2020 World Series was played at Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas. Okay, I actually don't know if that's correct or not. You can go search about it and tell me if it's correct. Then, of course, when we have this response, it's a big object and we don't necessarily want to see everything all the time. So how do we extract that? We can simply replace the whole response by just looking at the messages of the response, like so. This will just print out the content of the response. Let me run the file and there we go. It will just print out the response. Okay, now you are free to do any experiment. I'm going to talk about one more parameter that you might have heard about a lot. That is called the temperature. The temperature is the sampling temperature. You can choose between zero and two. The higher the value, the more random the output is. So you can think of it as the creativity of the model. If you use temperature as zero, it will always give you consistent and more factual answers. And if you want the model to be more creative, you can use higher temperature. We can use it simply by adding temperature as a parameter and set it equal to the number you want. Let's take a look at what can we do. I'm going to change the prompt to write a 20 word poem about a robot. And if I set the temperature to zero, let's see what does it do. Okay, metal heartbeat, wires entwined, a robot soul in circuits defined. With every move, a world redefined. Okay, regardless of if this is good or not, if I run this file again, we can see that it actually outputs the exact same output. And that's what the temperature does. It makes the result very consistent and accurate. If we change this, let's say, to 1 and save it, let's run the file and see it again. Okay, we can see that the output has changed, the robot we perceive. Okay, and then let's say if I run this another time, what do you think will happen? So it outputs a different one. If the temperature is higher, the output will be most likely be different and gives you more creative answers. So that's what temperature is. And as you can see on the API reference page, there are a lot of other types of input you can experiment with. For example, the max tokens limit the amount of tokens and the functions will be very interesting. And I do want to make a video about that. So stay tuned. And Congratulations, you now know how to use the OpenAI API. If you find this video helpful, smash that like button. And if you really like this video and want to support what I'm doing, please consider buy me a coffee. Link in the description. Comment below for any suggestions. Example code from this video is also available in the description box. Feel free to grab it and take it further. Until next time, my friends, happy requesting.